Mani Na Putni. Welcome to Church Online, recorded on Ghana land. What a joy it is to gather in this way, to worship, to pray, and to grow together. My name is Lynn. I'm the minister at Adelaide West. I'll be sharing with you today. Each week, we light a candle. It's a reminder of the continuing presence of Christ in our community and in the world. And we remember that we are called to community where we live and serve one another. We're over halfway now in the Uniting Church Assembly's 14 days of prayer in the lead up to the referendum. You can sign up online or follow on Facebook. And there is a National Referendum Eve vigil on Friday the 13th of October, both on Zoom and in person at various locations. For South Australia, it's at Brougham Place Uniting Church in North Adelaide. We continue to pray together for love, kindness, reconciliation and hope. The 21st of October is Adelaide West's annual community fair. Drop in if you're in Adelaide. This is a great day to connect with the community around us as well as those that we're connected with through church online or any of our activities. Come, join the fun. We worship together. Where wide sky rolls down and touches red sand, Australians, whatever your culture or race, come, lift up your hearts to the giver of grace. I'm reading today from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 4, 7 to 9, and 12 to 20. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work. Honour your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant, 
his donkey or oxen or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rules, rules, rules. Everywhere you look, there are rules. There are rules in sport, in clubs and groups, rules for taxation, rules for spelling. I particularly like those. Rules for games, rules at home, at work, at school. We have rules from the, our local councils, state rules, federal rules. By law, we all need to vote in the referendum. That's federal. Rules are subjective to the person or group creating them. They might vary depending on the circumstances. For instance, you can't feed the pigeons in Venice. Take durian fruit on public transport in certain countries. Chew gum in Singapore. Or wear high heels at structures of historic importance in Greece. In Victoria, it's illegal to use a loud vacuum cleaner between 10pm and 7am. And in the Northern Territory, it's illegal to play a musical instrument on a bus. There are rules in places that we wouldn't support, like girls not being able to go to school, or criminalising certain groups of people, or historical rules that now seem absurd. Up until 1966, the Commonwealth Public Service had a ban on married women. We often talk about rules negatively, all these rules we have to keep and there are consequences to breaking rules, fines or the legal system. But the majority of rules are about safety, order, protecting people's rights and property, or being fair, how to simply live and function in society. For instance, there is no way that I would want to enter a busy road intersection without rules or even be on the road without rules. The rules provide order instead of chaos, safety. I want to be certain that everyone is driving on the left-hand side of the road or waiting their turn at an intersection. Likewise, rules about bike helmets and seatbelts and going to school, they're all for our own safety or good. So in the Bible reading, we've heard the rules from the Lord known as the Ten Commandments, also known as the Decalogue, the Ten Words. The Israelites have been liberated from slavery and are now wandering around in the desert. Last week we looked at their grumbling about the lack of water and how the Lord provided water from a rock through Moses. The Lord showed that he was among them. They're in the middle of nowhere and at the foot of Mount Sinai, when God's presence comes violently, enough to scare them. Earlier in the Old Testament in the Bible, God has promised Abraham that he would restore his blessing to all the nations. There would be restoration of relationship and access to God's presence. So God invites the Israelites into relationship and calls it covenant. It's a legal or a sacred agreement between God and Israel. It's like a seal between them. God promises to bless them if they keep their end of the covenant. The covenant includes a whole lot of rules. Eventually, it will be 613 rules, including the Ten Commandments, so that they can represent God to the nations of the world. God is remaking his people. They have no land and no social identity. Their values are being reshaped and recreated. Although we read about the Ten Commandments here, it isn't until chapter 31 in Exodus that God gives Moses the two tablets of stone, two copies, as a seal for their covenant together. One is for the Israelites and the other is God's copy, which is kept in the Holy of Holies in the Ark of the Covenant. Ten Commandments form the foundation of Jewish ethics and behaviour. 
their responsibility to God and to each other, and they give justice to the dispossessed. We could give a message on each of these, so today we'll just look at a couple of them. They start with a declaration of God's character. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The first four commands have to do with Israel's relationship with God. They are to honour God alone, to avoid idols, not misuse God's name, and to remember the Sabbath. Elsewhere, remembering the Sabbath includes a reference to children and servants and foreigners. So there's this directional shift here where God is honoured by acting rightly towards others. We're not just created for work, but also for joy and play. And we're to match the rhythm of our lives with God's rhythm. This is a rule to rest. This is good for us. I wonder how many of us break this rule regularly. Honour your father and mother. I could speak from personal experience here, but we'll leave that for another time. Then we come to the big three. You shall not murder, commit adultery, or steal. Do not murder and do not commit adultery are, are about respecting the image of God in the other. You shall not steal is the eighth rule. Let's have a look at this. Stealing here is taking another person's property without purchase or consent. It is an unfair exchange. And this isn't just whether we take something from someone or bring home a work pen or borrow something and not return it. This is much broader than that. It is, can also be stealing the truth from someone, deceiving them, getting by stealth. There is a sense here of taking something without the owner's knowledge or permission. So although we may think we're not stealing a physical thing, nor involved in white-collar crime, for instance, is not gossip stealing someone's reputation or their good name? And if every time we go to gossip about someone we are actually stealing from them, then we see this rule very differently. In the legal world, this could be defamation of character. You know, when we become a member of the Uniting Church, we specifically agree not to gossip. And then they're stealing a person's future. Babies born into poverty are robbed of their future, robbed by power structures that relegate them to permanent underclass. This is destructive power. And if we think for a moment of slavery, of at least 40 million slaves in the world, robbed of their freedom, robbed of justice. And we remember the words, you shall not steal. These big three rules on killing, adultery and stealing particularly address ways the vulnerable are affected or destroyed. The ninth, is not giving false testimony against your neighbour. This is about not lying. It's about truth telling. And then we come to the tenth rule, you shall not covet. Now this is about being satisfied with what you have and not coveting, obsessing, desiring what others have. And in context, it particularly relates to land and the development of large estates at the expense of vulnerable neighbours. Today we covet in our society through consumerism and the lie that our main activity is to ac accumulate and use more and more of the available resources of the earth. Coveting is part of our individualism where we believe we are entitled to whatever we want regardless of others. We could all experience coveting. And we see it on social media when people post about their best life, the image that they want us to remember. Covet isn't a word used readily, although I did use it just this last week when I was in someone's home. I love covets. And this commandment for me used to be, you shall not covet other people's commandments. But we now live in the manse and we have lots of cupboards, including a walk-in pantry, although at the moment it's more of a step-in pantry. But on Wednesday night, 
I was at a friend's house and I turned a corner and I stopped in my tracks. They had this butler's pantry. Now it wasn't this one, this is one I googled. It was amazing, over three meters in length with all these beautiful shelves. It took my breath away, I, I'm sure I heard angels singing. And I turned to my friend and said I had a problem. And when she asked, oh, what's wrong? I said, I'm not supposed to covet and look at this. If we have a physical house in heaven, mine's having a butler's pantry. Now I'm not saying the manse needs a butler's pantry. That's not the point. The point is that we all have, you know, we, we have all these cupboards at home, but I'm still able to covet another's pantry. Is there something that you covet? What would this be for you? It's a reminder to all of us, you shall not covet. You know, the Ten Commandments are like policy statements. They are the ten best ways, the ten loving rules, rules intended to ensure everyone's rights are respected. We show our love for each other in community in the way that we honour and respect each other's rights. The intentionality is relationship and community. They are a gift, not a burden, not a checklist. At night, we don't go through them and go, have I murdered today? They are guidelines for daily living. They're still that today. They are liberating, not restrictive. They're about recognition, recognition of who God is and who others are. They give voice to the voiceless, so people are protected. They reminded the ancient Israelites that they were God's people and these rules were to help them live in good relationship with God and with each other. When Jesus came hundreds of years later, he challenged the legalism of the Pharisees and their focus on the law, which were no longer a means to an end, but an end in themselves. And he summarized, summarized the laws into two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. This beautiful summary. And how do we love our God and love our neighbour as ourselves? These rules of love are a great clue to this. They embody how we are called to live. They shape our relationships with God and with each other. They inspire and challenge us to put God and others first. They help us to make decisions about how we live, how we give, and even how we vote. Jesus embodied this self-giving, transformative love, this love that changes and transforms our lives and our relationships with others. The 10 best ways, the 10 loving rules, offer a vision of the world that God promises to bring to fulfillment, a vision of a better world, a world of renewal and reconciliation of all people and all creatures. Amen. Not into
to temptation, deliver us from the evil one. Remind our hearts, you're always with us, and we shall never We come to pray for others. And I'm starting with a prayer that is a part of the 14 days of prayer for The Voice by the Victoria Tasmania moderator, the Reverend David Fotheringham. Let's pray together. God of mercy, hope and steadfast love, creator of this great land and all peoples, we bring ourselves and this country before you. God of mercy and discussions and sound bites, we feel the human toll as the experiences of First Peoples have been undermined, hopes have been misrepresented and misinformation has been promoted. In the hurts that we share and feel, bring your healing and mercy, God of hope. In this time of tension and anticipation, we share a longing for the truth that sets communities free, for First Peoples to be heard on matters of concern, for a better future for all Australians listening and walking together. In all of our longing, be the strength of our hope. God of steadfast love, present in this land since time immemorial, pour out your life for us, holding our stories in your heart. Keep us in your love, steadfast, deep and sure, that your mercy, hope and steadfast love would shine in this great land through this moment and for generations to come. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, you are the essence of life and you long for all people to share in the goodness you offer. As we learn to live in the power of your spirit, we are so aware of a beautiful world torn apart by all those things addressed in your precious law. We pray for people whose lives have been shattered by the anger, malice and destructiveness that murders relationships. We pray for communities, countries and cultures afflicted by the ravages of war, greed, intolerance and oppression. We pray for homes and families struggling with the demands of employment and the expectations of success constantly demanding attention. We pray for people who are seeking to forge new relationships, venturing into uncertain territory and wondering how they will shape our futures in ways that bring hope to the land. 
We pray for people who are learning to live with enough, daring to resist the endless expectations for more and working for the common good of even those who rebuke and ridicule. And we pray for those quiet, persistent voices that remind us all that there is a language of the cosmos inviting hope and stirring the precious life within toward a holy wholeness. We pray for the findings of the Disability Royal Commission, that they may bring a better world, a place where all are valued, all are heard, and we pray for your peace for all that have been a part of this process. We pray for those on our hearts today, for your love to carry them, surround them, and sustain them. Loving God, may we be the people who cultivate kindness, stir the embers of truth and listen in the silence for your voice. May we be a people attentive to care, who discern the spirit of the law that brings freedom to live and life for all. Stir within us that our lives may carry the spirit of your law. And as we give you our offerings, both financial and practical, may your love flow through these gifts into the world that you love. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the embodiment of your love. Amen. One, two, three, four. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place, for the way you have revealed your love and grace, and as we've taken time to listen for your word, we pray our lives will demonstrate we've heard. Take these feet, may they always. Taking time to listen for your word. We pray our lives will demonstrate we heard. Take these feet to me. Thank you for joining us today. We hope it's brought you hope. If you would like pastoral care or prayer, please reach out to us by text or email. We would love to pray with you. This week, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind and love your neighbour as yourself as we look to a vision of a better world. And now, are the grace and the kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love and the presence of God, the friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you as you seek to serve and follow and love God and love others. Amen. Blessings on your week. Let 
your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as in heaven let your glory come shining like the sun your kingdom